Let's do lips, mouth, piece, horn. I love this exercise. It means a lot to me because it was taught to me this summer before I won my audition at the Met. For some reason, Carmine did not teach this exercise to my high school band in the 60s, and it took until 1984 before I learned this exercise, and it turned my playing around. I want to be quite clear that we're going to be buzzing on the lips, free buzzing. We're going to be then buzzing on the mouthpiece and then playing on the horn. In all three events, do your best not to manipulate the embouchure to be the same. In my experience, those students that just tried to produce sound in the easiest manner in all three events progress the fastest on this exercise. Clear? Perfectly clear. Excellent. Let's go back and forth. We'll do the lips first. And I want to, at this point, just give credit to the late Lori Frank. She was at Carmine's house the summer that he taught me this exercise in 1984. And it was Lori's buzz that will forever stay present in my ears. So let's go back and forth with this, OK? I'm going to start on a middle G. Give time. <laughs> I want you to watch very carefully the way I end my notes. Watch and feel my time. <laughs> Good job. Very good job. Now we're going to do the very same thing on the mouthpiece. Let's do it in unison.
third step is to do it on the horn. With this particular lips mouthpiece horn, we're gonna note bend. So the only note fingered is the first note. The half step will be bent. Okay. Okay? And um, we're gonna use a breath attack. We'll do it together. One and two and bing. <laughs> Excellent. Very well done. Now, when you get comfortable doing it in this range of a fifth, feel free to take it lower. I would discourage you going much higher. Okay. Maybe to the third space C, but that's it. Otherwise, you're going to start manipulating in the embouchure that is not going to be helpful to you. There are many variations to lips mouthpiece horn. The second one is fourths up. <laughs> to use the tongue. Mm -hmm. Keep it forward and ride the air. My tongue is right there, ready to move. There it is. Since I know you so well, I know your tendency is often to keep that tongue kind of far back, particularly with lips mouthpiece horn. The farther forward you keep it, the easier it's going to be to play this exercise and the better results you're going to get. In fact, I can't think of too many times I would ask you to have the tongue far back in your mouth. Forward, forward, forward. Do the mouthpiece part now, Alex. Okay. Do it on your own. Four beats, one. Two and three and
good job. Would you be my timekeeper? I'd be happy to. And there's one more variation that Carmine taught me that I often will do when I've got a lot of upper register work. I find that this fourth down really helps set my chops up in a better upper set. Can we try it? Excellent. I can tell you haven't done this one very much at all. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Any questions about lips, mouthpiece, horn? Not so far. Well, what I'd like to emphasize is the importance of doing this exercise without forcing or manipulating. If you find that it's difficult to do one, like this last one was a little bit tough for you. Mm -hmm. It almost stopped you midway because I could feel you were kind of making it happen. Yeah. So I would very much discourage those who want to practice the lips mouthpiece horn from doing anything that doesn't work with ease. Pick a note where it starts easily for you. Don't force anything and take it as far as you can go without it being a strain. So even if you can just buzz a single note and can't move, do that on the lips, on the mouthpiece, and on the horn. Mm -hmm. And if you can't even get a lip buzz going, which I've experienced with many students, you can just do the mouthpiece and the horn. Or you can do the mouthpiece and pull it away and let the lips vibrate and then go to the horn. Whatever works the most easily with the least amount of strain will get you the best results. One of the things I've noticed for myself is that pitch center and projection are greatly improved when my students practice this exercise. At the same time, I've had students who just won't do it, and I don't make them do it. If they're afraid of it, don't make them do it. The chances are they're going to do something not natural, not with ease. Clear? Perfectly. Thank you. Thanks, Julie.